the site plan on Williams, then take from that and subtract at 117 as our required parking, we would need a variance for 24. I will also stipulate that we will continue to work with Hinton to provide however many spaces we can get there. But I do not have a comfort level uh, based on their you know, uh, issue of future uh, uh, incumbencies. So with that, I'm, I'm going to stipulate to a request for 24 spaces. Now that's down from 24 plus 28, which was about 60, 56, or whatever, that we dealt uh, with before. Uh, that we will continue to work with uh, in tomorrow. But again, I can't, I just, I just don't have that, you know, yes with a, a condition from that. Yes. Okay. And, um, and then the last thing is, we, as, as we got to looking at the whole thing and realizing that we had a 28 on the West End, my owner asked, could we look at recycling the whole thing and putting it in use? has the most parking required over on the west side closest to where those 20 parking spaces are. So we we have a site plan that we think meets code and would meet these conditions that I just spoke about. Uh, with hurricane on the west side where all where all that parking you know really exists in the future. Uh, placing Denny's down on the east side closest to and I can't stipulate to that because it hasn't been engineered, it hasn't been, it hasn't been through uh, city staff, uh, but uh, that, that's something else that would help lessen that issue of all of that need down the east end. So when I, with that, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. And Mike Williams is also here representing. Any questions, any discussions at this point for Mr. Wood? Yes. What kind of track record does Hurricane really mean to have, and how old is this franchise? Okay, uh, we bought the franchise in 2008. So we are, we go out looking for somebody who wants to invest in a restaurant. Prior to 2008, it existed at, also as a franchise operation, and it was started back in the like the mid 90s. Okay. We are up to, uh, we're over 50 uh, stores right now. Uh, we've uh, bragged about it, whatever, but, but they were only one of the, one of the top franchises, uh, one of the top 50 franchises um, uh, through, the, through the franchise convention. Um, it's it's not an inexpensive thing to, to uh, uh, invest in. Because not only do you take over the franchise rights, but you've got to build, a, you know, you have to build a store. This is to be a company store. We, we will build it ourselves. It'll be for sale to a franchisee if we're able to get one. But this standalone store is we only have one in one other location in the suburbs of Raleigh, North Carolina, and. It's a home run. But what I need to know is the turnover. I mean, we've had some problems in this community where restaurants are closing after about three or four years. Oh, I can't. I can't. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, mean, I totally the history, understand. The history of, of closing. What was that for? Um, we've had a few stores where, uh, in, in one case, the gentleman's uh, partner passed away, and, and we had to help him. And there was a couple of other, we, we used to have like 35 seat restaurants and, and a couple of those closed because they did not have bars, they did not have, uh, they had beer and wine, they did not have liquor, they didn't have a sufficient number of uh, uh, seats. I mean, in this particular uh, location, we're gonna have uh, over 150 seats. So um, it, it, it does have a fantastic can, can they close? And would there be a reason to close? I, I, I can only. What is your market? Okay. Okay. 
Well, it, they, they do uh, uh, both drive time circles and then they do uh, uh, demographic circles. And uh, with, the, with, with the traffic the drive, and, and, and the drive time and in the demographics, it's, it's a very strong area. It's very strong. We, like I said, we only have one other franchisee with a standalone building. And it, it's a very similar situation. It's not, it's not real far from the inner, inner city. And it's close to uh, hotels and right now. And uh, we think that going from being in line of shopping center to a separate building is a, a positive move for any franchisee and, and, and for our companies. I, I can't say people don't go to the restaurants. I mean, I don't know what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Any other discussions? Any other questions? <coughs> Mr. Williams, are you in support of this? Are you on board with the extra parking that you're going on? Not my way. It's not that. 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 It's uh, based on what's available on their parcel with the gay parking place in short, uh, after we are uh, There is a conversation that has recently started. Because, quite frankly, we like to see two restaurants in the front door with two hundred. Uh, there is a conversation that have just begun in regards to uh, being able to utilize some 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 undeveloped land on the parcel that we have. Uh, West of what's present with the Dean's. Um, we're not at the point of talking terms, conditions, prices, and things like this. Actually, it's all subject to uh, the, the approval of the board in regards to uh, they would still have to continue to be aware of the parking places that uh, the special engineer, uh, I think, would not be able to get a little more than that. Uh, definitely in favor of flipping the hurricane. West as compared to uh, what's presently laid out on the side with the Indians on the rest. Uh, my reason for that is because of uh, peak uh, business times, uh, a feature of the businesses. Uh, as to Ms. Hoyland's comment in regards to the, uh, making this conditionally specific to these particular businesses, uh, I kind of agree with her. She might have been leaving that way. That, uh, actually, nobody needs to close down business in front of the door. Uh, we are very optimistic that we are going to be able to come to terms in regards to the way the land that we have as well as on the, uh, the west side. But uh, we're just not falling out the moment. I would uh, be in support of it being conditional upon us being able to work out whatever we can be able to work out. But as it presently is, with what's available on the ground, we would have to basically be by not as close. Okay. Should it pass, and should the variance be given for 24, then he would still, this entire project would still hinge. If he couldn't come up with the additional 28 spots that we're talking about, then it's still, it's not going to fly. It's going to you are correct, yes, sir. Okay, so if, if the board should decide to allow the variance of 24 and they can't work this out, then it's a no go. If I ask one question, I understand that Denny's has already been approved by Spain as it is. Denny's? So if then we aren't able to work out the other 28 plus that we're discussing here. The Deans is still an approved project to be moved forward as a single development system. Mr. Williams is correct. Right. The, the Deans can proceed. Hurricane Wings cannot if, if, if this is not able to put together, if they aren't able to put together a deal with at least Williams for 28, or if the count is wrong, 67, then it would be 27 instead of 28. But at any point, 
anything less than that total is going to shut Hurricane Wings down, Denny's will be able to proceed on its own. And the other question, and I, I think I already know the answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. If we put it in the motion that Hurricane Wings be on the west and Denny's be on the east, do we have the power to put that in the motion? I thought we did too, but I just I just want confirmation. Okay. They should have site plans in the back. Yep, they did Okay. Anything else? Any other questions, discussions? Is anyone here in opposition to this request? Does anyone have questions about what's being requested? Any other questions, discussions from the board? Anybody step out and give me a motion? I make a motion that we approve a variance for 24 parking places for the Hurricane Grill and Wings based upon a signed agreement with a neighbor for 28 um, adjacent spaces and that it not be tied to the brand of the restaurant that's there. Second. Second. I have a motion from the Corbin section by Scott. There was no mention about the location of two restaurants. Oh, and that the restaurants be flipped, that the Hurricane Grill and Wings be on the west and then it's beyond that piece. Okay, and I have a question. We are assuming there's a signed agreement. Well, it's conditional them putting together the signed agreement. They don't have the signed agreement. They don't have the parking spaces to, a, to use the 24 variables. And staff would not be able to sign approval on any set of plans until that agreement is made. I, I, I don't know if I'm comfortable with this board by conditioning a variance upon some ancillary uh, document. Uh, I, I, I'm just not comfortable with that. In other words, we grant the variance or we deny it. Period. Not based on some legal relationship between another party, between two parties. I'm just, I'm just saying.
favor, all the motion, please raise a hand. One, two, three, four, five. All opposed? Abstain? Okay, we have 501. We grant the motion as you had it the first time. One quick question because it, it, it's already done. I mean, we no, 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 no. It, it's about the uh, tied to hurricane or not. Not. It's not tied to hurricane. Right. The name of right. She asked for it to be. And, and I said not. Okay, all right. I, I just want to make sure that we didn't have a misunderstanding there. But, and, and that either way was fine, so thank you. Was that quick enough? <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please work it out Absolutely. so we don't have to try to bail it out again in the future. Thank you very much. Okay, next case is application 2014-01. Mary Wiseman. This case in front of you relates to accessible structures and a proposed addition. The lot is on the corner of 4th Street and Patron Street, specifically 403 South 4th Street. It's zoned R6, and the lot is for approximately 1,500 and a half. It's a single family resident in zone R6. The request pertains to two carports, a Disney bar, and a proposed addition to the kitchen on the rear of the house. The, the various requests for the accessory structures are long by passing. Like I said, there are two carports in the zero. They require basically to be in the rear yard and at least 10 feet away from all property lines. The zero is in the front yard. The, both carports are as well, but not in the rear yard. Um, they're also too close to property lines. The one carport actually seems to encroach into the right of way of South Forest Street, which is not permitted at all. The accessory structures are only permitted to be no more than half of the floor area of the house. The three structures are a little bit larger than half the square footage of the house. So there's an additional variance as well. The last variance pertains to an addition to the kitchen on the rear of the house approximately 77 square feet. The proposed addition is approximately 13.23 feet away from the property line. Now keep in mind, this is a quarter lot, quarter lot, and the setbacks are a little bit unusual. It has two front yards, and the actual kitchen is proposed in the rear yard, which would ordinarily be a side yard if it was an interior lot. After reviewing the case, we did, we did recommend denial for the, for the carports as well as, we actually recommend denial for both of the carports, and we recommend approval for both the gazebo and the property, the rear, rear yard addition to, for the kitchen with the stipulation that it be no more than 13.4 feet away from the property line to kind of balance out the aesthetic and maintenance. The neighbor to the side is approximately 13.4 feet away from the property line of the house. So that would kind of balance out with her vision. How large is the proposed garage? The proposed garage or the proposed We've got one carport that's 378 feet, and we've got one carport that's 294 feet. Tracy, are you aware that she has had that smaller carport removed? I have, I was not. Okay, when I went down here today, it was not here anymore. Is it the one on South Forest, or is it the one on South Forest? Okay, that was the one that was in front of the other Right, and it's gone. It will. Um, basically, this carport right here is still put too close to the property line, and it's also it's not allowed to be in a it's not allowed to be facing a public 
strict. Okay. It basically, the goal is to keep accessory structures basically in the rear. Um, that variance would, would still be intact, as well as the variance for the gazebo in the front yard. Now, what this does is it negates any variance for this um, being too close to the property line, um, as well as the being having too many square foot, or having too large of a square foot of accessory structures on the property. Yeah, with, with the removal of the one carport, it brings that total square It brings total down, so we're no longer looking at a variance for square foot. Right. We would be looking at a variance to set back on the carport to the remaining or proposed whatever. And we would also have to have a variance allow it to be in that location. Yes. And we also be required to put the variance for the kitchen. Right, kitchen would still be another variance. Right, right. So in essence, we have it, uh, unless the applicant is planning on putting the garage back, back in right. some fashion. Right. And we'll ask that question in just a moment. Right. But at this point we're talking about three variances, one for the kitchen one for setback for the carport and one for the location of the carport. The gazebo can go in without any questions. Or they did have to be in the backyard. Ordinarily, we consider gazebos an accessory structure as well. The ordinary accessory structures are required to be in the rear yard. So we need a... a so we would need a variance to leave the gazebo... Where it is as well. In the... all set back. Yes, okay. Otherwise you'd have to have a variance to okay. attach it yes. Yes, and encroach into the either one or both of the front yard set back. <coughs> Any other questions that you discuss? Anyone here in support of this application? If the applicant here would like to give us any information? And I get your name and address for the record. Mayor Wise, 403 South Water Street. From the very first one, I learned that in law is my dining, uh, build my dining room there. So the dining room is very small, but you know, the table in there is very quiet. My grandchildren and great grandchildren, my family that I need to treat. So that, that's really what I want to do. Okay. So the. Do you have any intentions of trying to put the carport that's on the South Park Street side back anywhere, or are you just going to... Oh, it's not there anymore. I understand it's not there, but you plan no, to put no, it back no, anymore? No, uh, no, no. Okay, any other questions or discussions about this case? Is there anyone else here in support of this application? Yes. In the neighborhood that it is. What I get for I need your name and address for the record for this. Calvin Graham Senior. Seventeen oh one Eagle Drive, uh, Russell. Consider the neighborhood one King area and look at curb appeal of this house which really brings it up. And I actually consider that it is an improvement to the neighborhood. something or are you here potentially in opposition? Chairman, my name is Ian Dennis. I live in Rex. In fact, his wife, uh, we read together. Um, but I'm not going to, me and my wife and I are not going to see she has gone to, I mean, the trouble trying to get this done. So, um, it's okay. 
you are in support or at least not in opposition? No, no. Thank you very much. And anyone else here in support of this application? Is anyone here in opposition? Does anyone have a question about what's being requested? Any other discussions? Any other things we need to talk about as a board before I ask for a motion? Okay, the next application is application 2014-02, Ashley House Apartments. Yes, ma'am? This request is for signage, for a wall sign and a projecting sign for Ashley House Apartments on the order of Hill and Ashley. And they are proposing two signs, um, subject property contains an apartment complex of about 61 units. It's geared towards adults, about 55 or older, and has a commercial tent space along the park. They are proposing, they're doing some renovations currently, all have, have been approved by the HBC, um, the physical alterations to the building as well as the signage. Um, they are intending to put a signage on the building that sort of is reminiscent of signage that was on the building in the 40s. Staff has a confession to make, which was caught by one of our members. We have been enforcing the wall signs a little bit differently than the actual reading of the, the ordinance. The ordinance reads that we can permit two square feet for every meter of feet of frontage. We've been interpreting it the flip side, one square foot for every two million feet of frontage. That is incorrect. Under the accurate interpretation, the accurate reading of the, the current regulations, they are permitted, in terms of wall signs, two square feet for every linear feet of branch. Which in this case, they have 100 feet of branch on the, the facade that they're going to put the wall sign on. In theory, that would allow them 200 square feet rather than the 50 originally interpreted by staff. However, they're in the cap of 180 square feet. So they would still need a variance of 180 square feet that is proposed for the wall sign. It's not something that can be handled administratively. So they would still need a variance for that wall sign. Now, the projecting sign, that we would only be allowed to permit 12 square feet and they are proposing about 23 and a half square feet for the projecting sign. We did review the case, realized that the Ashley House is one of the tallest buildings in downtown, and do some 
for variants related to the signage in proportion to the to the physical structure of the actual house. So we did found a hardship and we do put in the pre ball for both sides. Any questions? Okay, so the variance then is being requested now under the new interpretation. We need a 50 foot variance for the wall sign. Okay. 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 Can you say again, Tracy? Sorry, 125 square feet. Again, it's my error. So that would be the, the cap is 125 square feet. And not 200. Correct. Um, so they would be a half of seventy-five. Correct. Everybody's not mad. Everybody's happy. Okay, so wall sign variance is seventy-five feet. Right. The projecting sign variance would be twelve feet. Right. Twelve plus twelve would be twenty-four, and they're asking for twenty-three and a piece. Right. So uh, about twice. Okay, any questions, any discussions from the board at this time? Is anyone here in support of this application? Do the applicant here want to add something? Uh, my name is Steve Brooks. I reside at 64 A. Johnson Road in Ann Arbor, Georgia. I'm a professor the applicant. I'm a CFO of the parent company. Um, our intent here is to put the three projections down that will hit this corner of the building on the actual street. Um, and over, no, excuse me. Hill Street. Uh, it'll actually be facing Hill Street. It'll reside above the uh, building. Not that one, no, sir. This is the uh, a larger sign. I'm sorry, it's the vertical sign. Yes, sir. Thank you. The vertical sign. Um, it'll actually be hanging over. The building itself, there's a second floor, sticks out about 12 feet on the Hill Street side. This will be above that, won't be over, it won't protrude above or out further than that uh, building at all. And uh, you know, we're just doing historic renovation, we're using historic cash credits, and uh, we believe it's in the spirit of bringing that building back to what it uh, was at one time. And just, sorry, is that explain something? Sure. Now, I wanted to kind of talk about. The location of this sign. It was originally intended to kind of project off of one of the corners of the building. We've had some discussion with GDOT, and this is GDOT right of way. Unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, GDOT, GDOT doesn't permit signage to intrude into the right of way. So I relayed that information to Mr. Brooks and his team, and they have relocated the sign, proposed to relocate the sign to over this little little extrusion right here so it's no longer intruding into the right way. Okay. You have, a, you have no problem with it. If the motion is made, then that sign would be on that side of the building. Right. Well, we have to get the DOT approval, so I think that we have to meet the requirements as well. Okay. Any other questions? Any other discussion? Anybody else here in support of this application? Is anybody here in opposition or does anyone here have questions about what's being requested? Ladies and gentlemen, I think we've got it. Unless there's more discussions. I have a motion from Ms. Gaffins to grant the request as presented. And I have a second from Mr. Orstein. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous, good luck with it, gentlemen. Please make it look good. Okay, last case. Application 2014-03, North Action Street Ventures. This is probably the DCS City case today. That means we just hold on now.
managing shock pharmacy. They manage the shock pharmacy, has submitted plans, and gotten uh, plans approved for a commercial type pharmacy. Commercial type pharmacy with a drive through. Drive through is required to have six stacking spaces. Basically, for elbow room, for little room, when you're going in to pick up your, your prescription, your medication, what have you, so that you're not, you're not inhibiting traffic flow either in the middle of the parcel or out on Ashley Street or Canal. After reviewing requests, we realized that the intent of our regulations for six stacking spaces was more intended for heavier duty commercial, commercial entities, maybe your fast food restaurants, maybe your banks, that do more of a drive through business than a smaller pharmacy. We do review requests and we do recommend for approval, basically believing the intent of the regulations was more towards your commercial and more heavier duty commercial and with a recommended approval for the free drive through stacking spaces with the condition that it be ready for a pharmacy. Thank you. I'll, I'll speak to you after about that. Right. Okay. Any questions, discussions at this time? Anyone here would like to speak on behalf? That doesn't include Mike here. Except Mike. Put that in a minute. <laughs> minute come, <laughs> Good afternoon, Chairman Board. Bill Nigel, 1007 North Ashton Street. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Afghan North Ashton Adventures. 